Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. I'm Karen Cirillo. I uh, work for the United Nations Development Program, and we are very happy to be here tonight. Thank you very much to Mary Calder for being here, for being our CAP Talk speaker. Thank you to the Austrian Foundation for Development Research for uh, initiating, organizing, hosting us, uh, and to the European Commission for being our partner in this initiative for almost 10 years um, and doing over 100 lectures together, which is really fantastic. Um, I'm honored to be here today to introduce this lecture. The Kapuczynski Development Lectures brings together prominent speakers of our time to universities across Europe to discuss pressing issues that are facing our world. Um, since uh, 2009, UNDP and the European Commission have brought over 100 lectures uh, that have been attended and watched by over 130,000 people from Europe and across the world. This lecture series is named after Richard Kapuczynski and honors his work. He's a famous poet, uh, Polish journalist and poet who wrote a lot about developing countries around the world uh, and brought them a little bit closer to us here in Europe. He focused a lot on the individuals, the poor, the people who were being left behind, and looked at their dreams and their aspirations, which is one of the reasons why these development lectures try to look at issues that are facing individuals around the world. The lectures bring something important and relevant to the table and provide educational opportunities for speakers, uh, students, to hear experts on topics that are, are affecting them. So we're very happy that we also have an online audience for the Kapuczynski Lectures. Uh, and I, if anybody out there is watching online and you would like to ask a question for Mary after the, the lecture, you can tweet at us at hashtag CapTalks, K-A-P Talks, uh, and we'll direct the question to Mary. So thank you very much. I turn it over. So, Mrs. Cirillo has already said a lot of things I was, plan I was planning to say, so I will be very short. Um, I'm very happy and it's a great pleasure to be here uh, today at the uh, University in Vienna. And it's a great privilege for me to introduce Professor Mary Caldor, who will speak to us about um, national, uh, about the concept of human security in, as the title says, times of geopolitics, Glo the war on terror and new wars. This concept of, um, this concept of um, human security is also a principle that is the, a building block of a new, the new EU strategy for security sector reform that the Commission, the European Union has adopted in 2016. And the first objective, uh, so the strategy points out, of national security systems must be to ensure the security of individuals as they perceive and experience them. So the security system should uh, also address, or in particular as address the specific needs of women, of children, of elderly and minorities. And it should ensure that women and men have effective and equal access to security services. Um, so this new strategy aims at deploying uh, a real and um, generally inclusive approach, one that goes beyond mere service delivery and aims at, at ensuring that women and men have um, equally are equally represented at all levels of the relevant security institutions. When we focus or so focusing on the nexus between security and development, uh, between the relationship um, between peace and development. This means that we have to invest greatly in conflict prevention and peace building with a clear focus on human rights and the rule of law. These are integrated parts of a global approach to development. Um, the European Commission has adopted guidance for such a right-based approach to programming and in that context on how to address terrorism, organized crime, and cybersecurity. When we aim to achieve sustainable peace, we have to encourage inclusive politics. We have to encourage good governance, strong state, society relation, and economic opportunities. And this is also part of the new European consensus on development. It, this consensus provides us with a strategic approach in which security plays a central role in responding to core development priorities. 
So on this basis of this new European consensus on development, the EU and its member states should actually have or should be well equipped to use the full range of policies and instruments to prevent and help resolve conflicts and crises, to meet humanitarian needs and to build peace and good governance. We will hear how this then effectively is implemented. Yeah, so. Now, um, I would like also to stress uh, that this Kapuczynski uh, development lectures, that the European Commission is very proud of being associated with these lectures, because it brings academia and policy makers closer together. And actually, in fact, anyone who is interested in development issues has an opportunity to learn and discuss uh, urgent development issues. These lectures are live streamed and can be followed. And many have taken this opportunity. We have heard 130,000 persons in the, in the EU and worldwide have already followed these lectures. So I hope that the audience that follows us today via live stream is also participating in the, in the debate. I myself look forward to a very inspiring lecture and a lively discussion. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to Mrs. Caldo's lecture. Um. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Werner Ratzer. I'm the director of the Austrian Foundation for Development Research, and I shall facilitate tonight's discussion. Let me start by thanking Mrs. Cirillo and Mrs. Lugin uh, from, um, respectively, the uh, UNDB and the European Commission for cooperating in the organization of this event. It has been a pleasure for us to um, co-host the, the second uh, Kapuczynski Development Lecture in Austria. Um, let me also um, start by thanking Mary Calder for coming to Vienna in, in the midst of um, a very turbulent uh, political situation in um, her country of origin, uh, the United Kingdom. Um, and perhaps in the discussion we'll have uh, a short uh, possibility to also discuss about the impl implications of a possible Brexit or um, what is to be expected uh, from the UK uh, political scene in the next couple of weeks and months. Um, but before that, let me perhaps um, shortly introduce the, the motivation for organizing this, this lecture at this particular point in time. As you know, um, the Austrian, uh, Austria holds the presidency of the European Union, so we wanted to make a little contribution also in terms of stimulating the debate on EU external um, and, and foreign um, policy and security policy, respectively, by organizing this talk at a point um, when um, obviously what has been happening in the last couple of years has very much called into question, as I would think, uh, the um, approach of the European um, Union towards uh, foreign policy, security policy, um, given that, for example, the United States under Donald Trump uh, and other emerging powers um, have step by step um, moved away from um, a liberal international order um, or what uh, has been described as a liberal cosmopolitan vision of global governance by Mary Calder herself. Um, and that obviously poses a lot of questions and challenges to the European Union because the European Union, as I would understand it, is kind of situated in the midst between this new renaissance of um, geopolitics and geoeconomics on the one hand, the reemergence of economic nationalism, um, and on the other hand, uh, the um, um, other emerging powers, in particular China, that um, move towards what I would see as establishing some kind of an alternative um, international order by um, promoting their own institutions or by promoting regional projects like the Silk Road project and, uh, projects and, and other similar projects. So we are, if you want, in a um, period of transition perhaps, um, towards a multipolar international order. Um, and that brings with it a lot of uh, questions, problems, um, and new situations that the European Union has to deal with. So that is one of the principal motivations for uh, organizing this Kapuczynski development talk, uh, talk of, of tonight. Um, so um, obviously, then the question emerges, if we are in this kind of interregnum, um, what does that mean for European Union external and security policies? 
um, is the global strategy that has already been mentioned uh, and that was endorsed only three years ago, uh, or two and a half years ago, um, still fit for purpose? Does the European Union have to think about um, revising its approach towards foreign um, policy, towards, the, towards issues of global governance? Um, or what kind of um, changes um, should be uh, thought about and should be perhaps uh, implemented in the near future. So um, in other words, if the prevailing national foreign and security doctrine endorsed by many leading nations, in particular the United States under Donald Trump, which reads my country first, um, is pro proliferating, how can international cooperation happen? Um, and how can effective solutions for contemporary global challenges, like for instance climate change, be found in the future, uh, uh, which undoubtedly um, are a core element of every human rights-based concept of human security? So um, against this background, um, what should the role of the European Union be in international politics in the time to come? Um, undoubtedly, I would argue it is um, not possible to pro provide any satisfactory answers to that question um, tonight. But I hope that our discussion tonight will lead to some uh, useful insights in terms of how to think about that and potentially also how to act upon that situation. I'm thus looking forward um, to the keynote, keynote by Professor Calder and the subsequent discussion with uh, Ulrich Brandt um, and also, of course, the discussion with you, uh, the audience. Before I give the floor to Professor Calder, let me shortly introduce tonight's keynote speaker to you. Professor Calder is uh, a professor of global governance and the director of the Conflict and Civil Society Research Unit in the Department of International Development at the London School of Economics and Political Science. She's also the director of the unit's largest research project, the Conflict Research Program. Professor Calder pioneered the concept of new wars in global society, civil society and her work on the practical implementation of the concept of human security has directly influenced European and also national politics. Um, perhaps um, quite noteworthy is that at the request of Javier Solana, the then high representative of uh, external uh, affairs of the European um, Union, she was the convener of a study group on European security capabilities, which produced the influential Barcelona report with the title A Human Security Doctrine for Europe, which has influenced European, the European Union's approach to external policy and also more recently the global strategy um, that was endorsed in 2016. She's written and edited many books. Uh, I think I don't have the time to enlist them all here, but uh, most recently she has um, edited uh, two volumes and, and written one volume. Um, the first um, volume is, is, is entitled um, the International Law and New Wars, co-authored with Professor Christian Jenkins, which deals particularly also with the legal implications um, of, of an international cosmopolitan uh, liberal order. And uh, her recent, most recent book is entitled Global Security Cultures. Um, and Professor Calder would particularly also talk about the uh, concept that she's been developing in the course of um, this book. So welcome to Vienna. Welcome to the Center for International Development. We're looking forward to your talk, um, and afterwards we'll have the opportunity to discuss uh, the concepts and other questions with you in more detail. So thanks a lot for coming, and the floor is yours.